Hello and welcome to Man's Model Moments. A couple of weeks ago I did a comparative unboxing video of every 172nd scale F35 tooling to determine what was the best available. Moss and I also looked at commercial model tool sets on Beyond the Box, so I thought I'd combine these two to bring you the starter tool showdown to see what the best tool sets available are. So let's have a look at the contenders. First up is Airfix, or rather their companion company Humbrol, with their kit construction tools. Next is Italieri, with its imaginatively titled Tool Set. We then have Ravel, with its Model Set Plus. And the last entrant from the big manufacturers is Tamiya's Basic Tool Set. The newest manufacturer here is China's Meng Models, with the Basic Hobby Tool Set. And then the only aftermarket company represented is AK Interactive, with their Basic Tool Set. Next we have the generic model craft. You have two entries, the plastic modeling tool set and the pro plastic modeling tool set. Turning to Amazon and the even more generic Chinese companies, we have the unpronounceable Books Quinlex and their eight piece Gundam model tools. A company called Wemas gives us a 26 piece Gundam model tools kit. And finally from this source, we have Orsal and their 33 piece Gundam model tools kit. Finally, I went looking around and put my own collection of budget tools together for under £20. So that's our lineup of 12 entries, ranging from the biggest and oldest model manufacturers to a single modeler's choices. Let's see how they do. The first category, as always, is price. There's a big range here. The Amazon Gundam 8 piece set is cheapest, at just less than £9 with Humbrol close behind at just over £10. Then there's a bit of a jump to Ravel's £14.99 in the Italieri set just over that. The Meng, AK Interactive and Modelcraft sets are separated by only £1, and I managed to come in budget less than a pound more than them. The 33-piece Orsal set is a penny short of £20, and both the Wemas and Tamiya sets are about a pound over. Modelcraft's Pro set is a whopping £8 over the £20 mark, making it by far the most expensive set here. That means that the small Gundam set claims first, Humbrol second, and Ravel third. In terms of points, I'm giving each set the difference between its cost and our £20 budget, meaning that some of the sets start off actually losing points, the Modelcraft Pro set starting 8 points in debt. Moving on to round 2, we're looking at sprue cutters. I'm going to be judging the cutters on three main points. Their comfort and ease of use, the quality of cut they give, and their ability to access difficult areas for cutting. Comfort is important for long-term use and to avoid repetitive stress on the hand, and I'll be judging these subjectively against my gold standard Dispie single blade cutters. For quality of cut, I'm going to be cutting a piece of identical sprue and measuring the spur length with my digital caliper. This is an indirect measurement of how much the cutters are crushing rather than cutting, with smaller values being better. Again, the gold standard here is that for my Dispier cutters, which cut perfectly cleanly as you can see here, with pieces being able to be joined back seamlessly after cutting. For access, I'm going to be using this sprue of small brackets from Italieri's F35A kit, and seeing how easily I can get in and successfully and cleanly cut one of these small parts off. Now it has to be said that although the great majority of these cutters are double bladed and superficially similar, there's a lot of variation, as can be seen from this side shot, where you can see how the thickness, angle and length of the jaws varies. There is a notable exception here though, with AK Interactive's cutters which are the only single bladed cutters here, and produce by far the best cut. Though not quite up to the Dispie cutters, they actually have slightly longer tips and there's better access to tighter areas. The main model cutters are the best of the double bladed designs, with an internal spring and long pointed jaws for good access. The Tamiya cutters just pip them though, with a better quality of cut. By far the worst, on the other hand, are the Ravel cutters, which both give an awful cut, more of a pressure crush forcing the parts apart, and have broad, thick jaws that make access to anything but the most accessible gates troublesome. Even the cuticle cutters, which obviously are not designed for plastic, that are in my collection are better. In fact, they're better than several of the cutters for access, probably because they're steeply angled to get right up to your nail to trim awkward skin away. 
They are quite small, which helps here, but also mean they're harder to use and more uncomfortable than most. Now for most of these scoring categories, I'll be using the same system as I did in my F35 video, with 12, 10, 8 and 6 points for the first 4 places, and then 5 to 1 dropping in 1 point increments for the next 5, meaning the lower places won't be scoring any points at all. With that, it's an easy win for AK, with the smallest of margins between Tamiya and Meng for 2nd and 3rd. So let's progress to round 3 and take a look at knives. Having tested all the knives here for their ability to cut tape and plastic without any noticeable differences, it became apparent that the main points between them were going to be on other factors. What sort of knife they were, comfort and grip whilst held in various ways, materials of construction and quantity of blades. I chose a scalpel for my bundle and this is easy and comfortable to hold, either like a pen, to press and draw against a ruler or in the hand for paring and scraping. Its shape means it can't easily rotate in the hand and it has non-slip machining. It's made of stainless steel, has a good weight to it and holds the blade firmly. The aluminium knives in most of the sets achieve the same thing as the scalpel, but just don't feel as well weighted or robust. The all-metal AK Interactive Knight is much better balanced, with a heavier feel and weight, but it is rather too long, making it awkward to hold for some tasks. Meng's knife has a plastic body, and has an unfortunately pointed end that makes it stick into your hand for some jobs, making it the worst of the hobby type knives here. Surprisingly, Tamiya supply a snap-off blade knife in their set, and although metal bodied, the large end makes it uncomfortable and awkward for some jobs. The Wemass set had two knives, but the plastic bodied hobby knife instantly broke at the metal plastic interface, a key weakness of this design. The single snap-off blade knife is actually more ergonomic than Tamiya's, but the blade does rattle about in the body a bit, which doesn't really inspire confidence. The plastic bodied Revel snap-off knife falls between these two, which means that the scalpel in my set takes first place, followed by AK, and with third going jointly to all of the aluminium handled hobby knives. As Humbrol don't supply a knife, they obviously score nothing for this round. On to round 4, abrasives. Now all of the sets here except Ravel and my collection feature files. Of these, most are diamond type files, with only Tamiya, Italieri and Modelcraft supplying purely metal files. I feel the cheaper Italieri and Modelcraft files are actually slightly better than the Tamiya file, since their size allows better access to small areas. I also think the metal files are better than the diamond ones at smoothing burrs on parts, as the latter are a bit too aggressive. There are some quality differences here, but not enough to really make too much difference. In contrast, all of the Gundam sets and my collection feature a variety of abrasives, one or more files and a variety of sanding sticks of various different grades. These are flexible and will allow sanding and smoothing of seams and surfaces that a file just can't achieve. As my collection has boards designed for sanding plastic gel type nails, they are just as applicable to plastic models and are supplied in a wide range of grades. The Ossal set actually includes a pack of three sanding sticks specifically designed for modelling as well as a foam sanding block for larger areas. And all of these are infinitely more useful than a file. In addition, the Ossal set also includes a variety of grades of wet and dry paper. By contrast, the Ravel set has a single emery board, the disposable equivalent to a file, and by far the worst in this category. The quantity and variety of different abrasives in the Ossal set make it an easy first place here, with my collection coming second and the Wemass set third. Let's carry on to round 5 and tweezers. Firstly, the Atelier and Modelcraft sets don't have tweezers, so score nothing here. Humbrol starts us off with their broad, flat bladed tweezers, which I find difficult to hold anything plastic with, 
and they lack control. Ravel's tweezers feel cheap and also lack tip control, with their narrow angled head unsuitable for most tasks. Wemass and Orsall both supply five sets of powder coated handled tweezers in a variety of shapes. They feel a little flimsy, and some don't have great tips, but as you get five pairs you should have a couple that work okay. The tweezers I chose are also powder coated. They come in a set of four, and being shorter than most of these, they give great tip control while manipulating things. They also come together for the last five millimetres or so rather than just at the tip, giving you much larger contact areas, which is better for many things. Being shorter, they do have the drawback that they require a bit more pressure to hold them together. The 8-piece Gundam set gives you two pairs of tweezers, and being the cheapest set you might expect them to be the same as those in the Orsal or Wemass set, but they're not. They are powder coated, have precise tips, decent action and good tip control. Honestly, I was genuinely surprised at how good these were for the price. Tammy's tweezers are not powder coated, but they are nicely finished and have good action. They're actually surprisingly similar to the angled pair from the prior set. The AK Interactive tweezers are the only properly shouldered tweezers in these sets, and they have very fine tips with the lightest action of any of the tweezers here. Comparing them to the Gundam set, this is obvious. The main model tweezers are beautiful. They're a brushed metal finish and have a great weight to them. They feel like surgical tweezers in the hand. Have great tips with good control and a light action about midway between the AK and the Gundam set. Even though providing a single pair, the Meng models and the AK interactives are easy first and second place here, with my cosmetic set taking the third. Let's move on to round six, extras. For this round it's easiest to start bottom up with Ravel, since they offer you nothing other than the basics. Humbrol gives you seven wooden stir sticks, which seems almost as bad as nothing. We follow that with the practically identical Italieri and Bobblecraft sets, which give you an A6 cutting mat, which has extremely limited utility. The Modelcraft Pro set gives you a slightly larger and almost as useless A5 mat, as well as a seam scraper. This latter might have a bit of use for a beginner, I personally have never found a really good use for them. AK Interactive and the 8-piece Gundam set both come in a semi-rigid polypropylene type case to keep all the tools in, which I think is useful for a starter, especially if you want to take them along to your model club for example. Tamiya also supply a case, but it's a rigid plastic which will crack or break if dropped, though the inclusion of a couple of reasonable quality screwdrivers offsets this. Meng's set comes in a soft, faux leather roll case which can accommodate more tools than supplied, and I really like it. My collection includes a couple of extra tools, one of which has a useful blade for scraping on one end, and a shaper or stir on the other, whilst the second is best given to your wife or girlfriend. The other extras are a set of 20 soft silicon grip pegs for clamping parts, and a set of paintbrushes including several flat-headed broad brushes suitable for larger area painting. The Wemass and Orsal sets both have a good A4 cutting mat, which is the smallest size you really want. They also have a flexible steel ruler, and this battery-operated grinder, which I expected to be garbage, but is surprisingly okay. You also get a case and a part separator, 
which might actually be useful when you're just starting out. The Wii Mess set then has a small pair of scissors, whereas the Orsal set features a pin vise, though the drill bits supplied with mine were completely useless. In any case, the Orsal and Wii Mess set take first and second place respectively, with my set taking third. Let's move on to the final round, Utility. To judge this round, I tried to separate out tasks in modelling. At a basic level, we need to detach parts from the sprues, remove burrs and seams from them, position and sometimes hold these parts whilst we join them in some way. We may need to then hold these parts together whilst they're drying. Sometimes we might need to cut or adjust parts. Once dry, we usually have to smooth any surfaces in preparation for painting. We then need to paint our model apply and position our decals correctly, and finally add any weathering. This is an iterative rather than a linear process, but these are the basic steps. And adding tools into this, we can see the steps they cover, and score points based on the number each set ticks off. Snippers, for example, are dedicated in removing parts. Files are generally only useful for removing burrs from cut parts. A modeling knife covers many activities, though how well it performs each task varies a lot. Tweezers cover several tasks as well, and some designs are better at some of these than others. Abrasives, which also include files, can remove burrs and seams, as well as general smoothing and preparation work on the model. Clamps can hold individual parts, or hold those parts together. Brushes are used for painting, but can also be used in positioning decals and applying weathering effects like washes and powders. Joining parts is the sole preserve of glue, and none of these sets contain glue, so we can rule this one out. Just to mention it, I'll put an airbrush in here, which is used solely for applying paint, and whilst it can create weathering effects, it isn't generally used for powders, washes, streaking and so on. My collection thus comes out with gold here, since it covers all ten of the possible areas. All the Gundam sets manage to cover seven of the tasks, so gain a joint silver, the Ravel, Tamiya, Meng and AK sets all managed to cover six tasks, coming in joint bronze position, whereas the Tamiari and Modelcraft sets both get five points, as does the Humbrol, though it covers a different set of points than the Tamiari and Modelcraft ones. So with that we can see that the first three positions overall are spanned by just a single point, meaning there really isn't anything between them. Now you might think I've engineered this so that my collection came out on top here, but that's not the case, though I'll discuss a little bit why I think that's happened next. So what can we conclude from this head-to-head -head of starter tool sets? Well, I think there are two main takeaways. The first is that it's easy to see what not to buy. Humbrol, Ravel and Italieri were utterly destroyed in this test, as were the two sets from Modelcraft, none of them achieving half of the points of even the fourth-placed set. Of the main manufacturers, Tamiya put in a passable performance, but one equalled by a random set of tools from an unknown manufacturer on Amazon. Meng Models' set is better or equal to Tamiya's in almost every respect, and that includes price. AK Interactive's tools were a surprise for me here too, and their cutters alone are worth the price that they ask. I just don't know why all of these companies insist on sticking with files as an inclusion. So let's move on to the second point I draw from this, and part of that is why my collection came out on top. This was despite its suboptimal snippers, and that's because I included things that actually help with modelling. A really good knife, one that can deal with a multitude of tasks. Tweezers that can do several jobs. Sanding choices that actually work for what we need. And extras that achieve tasks which aren't already covered, like clamping and painting. So as everything was chosen to achieve modelling tasks for a certain budget, in one sense it's easy to see why tools chosen by a modeller won out here. What's harder to understand is why, when modelling companies have just the same or greater experience, can't they do the same? And of course, they can. This is demonstrated by the Amazon sets I included here. I'm not even talking about the big box of bits sets from Orsal and Wemas. I'm talking about my personal winner here, the £9 eight-piece Gundam set. This provides more use than any of the modelling manufacturers for the lowest price. It's absolutely ideal for the beginner, 
it doesn't break the bank, it has good utility, and each of the provided tools does a decent job. They're not going to be the tools you use forever, but then none of these sets are. Some of them might contain elements you might always use, aka snippers, Meng's tweezers, and my scalpel are examples, but everything else is going to be replaced by better tools later on if you stick to the hobby. So continuing on that thread here, the most important takeaway for me is just to use your head. Think about what you need, how committed to the hobby you're going to be, and shop around before you buy anything. Don't buy any of the big name sets because they're mainly garbage, and even the decent sets here are let down by some elements within them. If I were going to make a recommendation here, I'd say buy the 8-piece Gundam set, some soft touch pegs from Lidl, and a £3 set of paintbrushes, and you'll be well set for the first half dozen or so starter kits you make, and then have the experience to look at what elements of those tools you want to replace in the future. Now before you go, if you didn't see my last video on the JM Bricklayer Tiger, I'm going to be giving that set away. The draw is available to all subscribers, so check out that video for details. Alternatively, you can join the channel here on YouTube, or on my Patreon, to be automatically entered with multiple tickets to have a better chance of winning. It just remains then for me to thank those wonderful patrons and channel members for their fantastic support. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, and if you're feeling generous then I also have a Patreon, which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modelling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.